Next up, uh, Eric Lindgren, a uh, gentleman who, uh, who's from Colorado, who, uh, who has caught my eye because uh, he does some really remarkable stuff uh, in the Colorado Rockies and so forth. Eric, do you want to give us a short bio on yourself and launch into it? Sure, I'll give it a try. Can everybody hear me all right? Yes, we can. Good. <clears throat> I'm trying to get the light a little better too, but uh, it's kind of not really set up for doing this. I don't do it that often, although I do take a lot of classes on Zoom lately for the foster care program. But uh, anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm. My name is Eric Lindgren. Um, I'm originally uh, from Iowa, uh, Mason City, Clear Lake area, uh, and uh, used to do a lot of rail fanning, Andy, over by where your presentation along the Mississippi River. My dad used to take me over there quite often. So it was kind of kind of nice to see that. <clears throat> uh, I, uh, I came to Colorado to go to art school about 18, 19 years ago. I have a lot of family that live here. Uh, so I just, I've been taking pictures since my dad gave me a camera when I was about 12 years old, I think, maybe 11. I had a little Kodak disc camera. He taught me how to use film, and my dad was a pretty good photographer, you know, but no trains, unfortunately. <laughs> Although he did a little bit of train photography in the early 80s. But uh, so I, I came here with the idea of becoming a painter, uh, illustrator. I originally was going to work in the movie industry, set design and character design and so on, and I ended up just kind of ended up staying here. Uh, my wife is a special ed school teacher in Louisville, Colorado, and and uh, I'm pretty much a stay-at-home full-time parent. At least I have been for the last five years, <clears throat> six years. So anyway, I'll open this thing up, see if I can get it to go. I need to uh, share my screen first thing here. I got to get back out of here. So we did a practice the other night. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, are you sharing my screen now? No, um, don't don't see it yet. Okay, I'm gonna. I think I need to do that, so I need to figure out how in the world I did it. Uh, where did we find that at? I wonder well, if you can help. The first thing you did was you had your presentation up, correct? Right. So it's and, up right now. All right, and you are using Zoom in the application, right? Right, but then I can't see it because. Hang on a minute here. You're probably maximized. Yeah, now I'm minimized. Sorry, guys, I figured this would happen to me. <laughs> Share screen. Yep. That might be helpful. That and there's that. Okay. The bottom. Yep. There you go. All right. Now, does everybody see that? Yep. Good. So there's the beginning page. Now everybody's got that. Fills your screen out. Uh, no fancy music. Uh, it's just a basic presentation of, uh, I've always liked fall colors. Uh, I do winter also, and, you know, I haven't been all the photography in this is you know within the last 10 years so although i have i have been doing fairly regular stuff since about 2001 here uh and and uh but i i don't have a whole lot of it in here but anyway we'll go ahead and kind of see if we can get things rolling along uh there's a little title page there's me up on the up near East Portal. That's a picture of me there, which is, I don't know why I put that in there. I think I'll skip past that. <laughs> so anyway, here's uh, <clears throat> how it usually starts out in the morning. <laughs> uh, this is sunrise at uh, uh, East Portal. And uh, it's kind of like the top of the hill. This is the Moffitt subdivision, uh, which is the old Denver and Rio Grande Western. This is one of the BNSF trains that run between Lincoln, Nebraska, Provo, Utah, and it's kind of a manifest. It's a daily, which is really nice because there's not a lot of traffic on the Moffat these days. Since we lost all the coal, it's been pretty quiet. So this train's always been a kind of a friend, even though it's not home road UP. It's still, you know, it's a train and I take pictures with trains in them, I guess, or photographs. Uh, I'm more of an artistic, artsy-fartsy photographer, if you will. <clears throat> I'm not really a roster shot photographer. Um, <clears throat> this is a, a fairly easy shot to get to. Uh, there's a small little uh, uh, mountain pass road that you can take. It's an old forest service forest service, <laughs> forest service road. 
that runs up just to, just past Rollinsville, <clears throat> or actually really technically Toland, which is like five little shacks and the sheriff's house. And uh, it, I frequent this location off. And on the left is the Giant's Ladder, which is the old Rollins Pass line before they finished the Moffat Tunnel. And uh, but this particular that's that's actually Toland uh, siding right there, and that's number five, the westbound California Zephyr. I took this in 2017, I think, late September 2017. Uh, this this shot here did this on a UAV. Uh, this one here is uh, located also at East Portal, but it's on the other end. It's uh, uh, east side of East Portal, and uh, I'm trying to capture the the yellow fall colors of all the aspen trees. <clears throat> and this is a Coltrane's an empty one, uh, which is surprising. And I wondered if, you know, I took this last October, and I think they were testing some Coltrane's. And because usually loaded, you know, they're usually, uh, generally, yeah, they're empty going west because they end up out at Bond and on the western slope where there's a mine out there. So, but the, but there hasn't been any real regular coal traffic at that time, so it was kind of a nice surprise that they were running a few of these when I was up there. And uh, this one is located, uh, this is a fairly, uh, it's not really difficult, but it's not outright simple. But uh, you drive up the Rollins Pass Road, which is the old grade for the uh, the old uh, Denver and Salt Lake, and then you, you stop about, it's maybe a half a mile. I wouldn't go up there with a two wheel drive at all, but, and then you kind of work your way through the woods and there's a couple of outcroppings that overlook the uh, the line right there. And then this is a zigzag. <clears throat> it's a nice compressed shot. If you want to shoot this on like at a hundred to 150 millimeter, it's kind of a neat shot. Um, and this is of course that Denver uh, Provo or the Provo to Denver train in this case, this is an eastbound. And you can see in the background, uh, East Portal, <clears throat> back there. Uh, this is a UAV shot taken uh, at Pine Cliff and that's one of the old uh, um, down there along the South Boulder Creek there were there was a generating station there at one time. Uh, this is all private property in here and that brings up an issue of why I decided to go start shooting UAV because a lot of property in Colorado has become private property and as, as, the, jo as the joke goes the entire state's private property. <laughs> so uh, if you want to get to some of these spots, uh, you know, unless you're willing to run the risk of getting ticketed by the Jefferson County Sheriff or Gilpin County Sheriff uh, in a mandatory court appearance and several hundred dollars in a ticket, uh, you know, a drone's very handy for that. Uh, you know, I can fly into locations. I, you know, I still need to do some extensive uh, walking to get to a spot where I can still fly because as you know some of you guys that use UAVs they don't have unlimited range especially like in this particular on the left is a thousand foot sheer cliff so you know I actually was not too far from this shot it was straight below but anyway I'll move along I think uh oh it's beeping at me and I'm not sure why hold on a minute here <clears throat> what did I do here yeah. For some reason, my computer is mad at me, and it's not letting me do anything. And it started to do this right when there was some stop share. Let's see here if I can figure this out. Uh, uh, what Eric, a time to hit. If yes, you, sir. If you want to just maybe click on the picture. Yeah, I don't see a mouse at all. It's in full oh. screen preview. Oh. Uh, I was able to use the arrow keys. I can't even escape out of it. Sorry, guys. What a time to have a problem. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, now I'm at hitting every button I can find. Wait a minute. Caps lock? Would that do it? Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll, let me, let me, uh, I don't know how to back up. Okay. I had the caps lock button on, on my MacBook. Now oh, that was fun. <laughs> All right, uh, this is East Portal. <clears throat> now, this is actually a remarkably difficult shot to get. It took me about 11 years to get the right timing for this dumb shot. This is between 7.30 and about 9 a.m. in October 
Uh, if you're earlier than that, it's all in shadow because the mountains are, this is a valley. You know, if, I could, if I backed up, I don't know if I can or not, but if you look back there, there's this huge mountain on the left. So that's all in shadow until about 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. And the sun gets really nasty up there at about 10 a.m., especially, I don't know what, it, it's, just, it's just darn right ugly because the sun is starting to swing to the left. It's south, it's low. And suddenly the nose, everything is all shadow. It's, it's actually pretty ugly. And I've got thousands of them like that. <laughs> but I finally got this one day. And with all the colors in full, almost every aspen tree is in full fall color. So that was the, the goal. And uh, that this, this was a repeat attempt. And I got lucky. And this was kind of surprising was just this last October. It was kind of uh, strange how I... I, like I do every morning, I just pulled up to the tunnel and gosh, it was still dark yet. <clears throat> I sat there and then the lights came on, uh, you know, that they indicate the trains in the tunnel or up on Moff or up on the uh, western slope over at uh, Winter Park Hill. So within a half hour and I was sitting there, you know, white knuckles, like don't come out too early, <laughs> you know, don't come out too late. So uh, it was, yeah. So anyway, uh, this is a totally different day. Once again, I think Mike asked me last week, is that the same train? Well, actually, technically, it kind of is. Uh, this is a regular occurrence, this train. This is that Provo, uh, Provo train uh, that comes through twice a day. And this is the eastbound, and this is a late, uh, late September. A lot of gray. <clears throat> Tried to get a different color because, you know, this. I've had this shot with the road full of leaves and everything as well. And it just had kind of an interesting, you know, feel to it. You know, just trying to bring that together. It's kind of, it's hard to believe that that's in, you know, in the high country. You know, it looks like it could be in Maine or something. You know, it's kind of fascinating. But uh, this was uh, taken near uh, uh, Toland, down the valley, uh, east of Toland. And that's one of the the Union Pacific uh, specials that they would wine and dine the executives. They sent them out on this train out to Grand Junction, or most of the time it's Grand Junction, but a lot of times they'll stop it uh, out at uh, uh, Steamboats. Now, no, excuse me, what is that called out there where they have the hot springs? A Glenwood, it's right on the other side of Glenwood Canyon. Anyway, <clears throat> can't come up with it off the top of my head. Uh, Glenwood Springs, there you go. Uh, it's kind of a destination for travelers and uh, oftentimes they'll do that for some big executive or some you know a big client so they'll run a special train and it's always nice to take photos of it they didn't run one this year which was kind of surprising uh, this year has obviously been hard on everybody because uh, this was a regular occurrence every fall for at least uh, at least in my memory which is at least 15 to 18 years and they didn't do it this year so kind of kind of a bummer I did this one last year uh, so in the effort to do fall colors, I'm always trying to mix the seasons. And <clears throat> once in a while you get lucky, uh, they'll, it'll snow before the trees are all bare. And so in this particular day, there was some, and of course you gotta get a train in the right time. <clears throat> and anyway, it's kind of a, kind of a, you know, a pretty picture of the train in it. <laughs> this is the Grand Junction North Yard Manifest. <clears throat> which are the, the, the guys here that work the railroads, they call this the local. Uh, and uh, it's also a train that's pretty handy to get to because uh, and I've got some relationships with some of the crews and they'll let me, they'll let me in on a, hey, the Grand Junction train was called at three, three this morning, which means it'll turn up at East Portal like around six or seven in the morning, which is pretty handy. Uh, off, now we're actually technically this is Chama, <clears throat> but it, it's Rio Grande and it's, it goes through Colorado. So anyway, I, did, I do a lot of photography down in, uh, on the uh, Coombers and Toltec. Uh, one of my favorite things to do. I didn't do it this year, but uh, <clears throat> this kind of brings up a, a, a kind of what I wanted to make sure to cover is when I shoot photos, uh, I'm shooting the post-process. I, I use uh, mostly primes. My, my favorite lenses are, are Zeiss. Uh, I also have Nikkor lenses. I use a Nikon body most of the time, a D810, or uh, I, that's just what I happen to have, so I worked around it. 
I, I shot this one here. I believe this was on medium format, so it's Fuji. Uh, this was uh, a 45 millimeter, I believe. So what I do is I shoot the, the camera, it's digital. And you know, those of you guys that have been doing film know that film is, you can only do so much with it in the camera. That's part of the, the art is to manipulate the film in the camera and that's what you get. Uh, with digital, it's, uh, you know, digital copies that. Digital is not film and, and, and it's, uh, it's engineered to replicate what film did and it's firmware that tells the sensor to emulate certain results. Uh, so when I shoot, I shoot raw all the time. I'm sure all of you do. On an icon, it's kind of a weird thing. It's just, at, you know, that's the whole idea is that, you know, it's, it comes out almost gray. And what I try to do is I don't want to blow out the highs. I don't want to crush the blacks. I don't want to, I want to have everything preserved as much as I can. I want to preserve all the colors wherever they are or capture them if I can. I want to preserve everything in the shadows, but I don't like HDR. And that's, HDR is not something I like at all. Uh, HDR is, to me, is surreal. Uh, I've, I've, I've learned a new term today called uh, deep fake. I heard that today. I saw a little thing that came up on my phone today. And that's a good way to put it because there's guys that are taking pictures themselves and superimposing different backgrounds and stuff. And, but that gives you an idea how in depth you can do with digital files. Uh, it's, it's limitless what you can do with them. But what I try to do is I try to recreate the scene that I saw with my eyes. If I were using a paintbrush and using a palette, and if I were there with my palette mixing my colors, I'd be looking to get those colors. And I would run a, take memory of that. Oftentimes I take notes with my iPhone and take a couple snapshots and, I'll, you know, I basically I'm building a piece of art <clears throat> with, a, with a photo, a digital file. So I try to recreate that scene the way I remember it. Uh, there was this intense glow and those, those trees are just alive. This is just after sunset, or excuse me, sunrise. And the crew is back in there. He's running the spout and they, they hang out there for about 15 minutes at that water tank. And I just wanted to really capture that scene. And that's what I do. Uh, I try to capture the scene the way and, and try to make it so it's a pretty picture. You know, I'm not a roster shot photographer, although this could be a roster shot picture to some degree, but it's more or less intended to be, uh, you know, a piece of art, I guess, if you will. Uh, this is uh, also along near Tolan, another, another fall. I'm trying to capture the different groves of aspens and all that are located along that line. And uh, th this is how the light is usually in the fall. It's very intense. You know, it's really strong up there. Uh, from Iowa in the fall, usually it's pretty gray and cloudy. And when I came out here, I found myself wearing sunglasses all the time. <laughs> it was pretty bright. Uh, that's, once again, that's number five. Uh, that was not too, that was this year. And uh, this, this was done uh, last, last fall. That's the Grand Junction train running the manifest, uh, which is a variety of things. Sometimes they'll move power. Uh, but uh, this particular scene, uh, that's uh, Rollins Pass again, and where the old line used to go over the Rocky Mountains. And this is, of course, the, the cut where they, you know, the train, the track zigzags. Um, <clears throat> and this is located near Pine Cliff. And uh, once again, it's an issue where, uh, and here you can see the fall colors coming up along South Boulder Creek down below, and that's uh, tunnel number, uh, this, the daylight of one is 29, 20, it's 27 back on the left, and then the 28, which is that area they daylighted that, I believe it was in the 20s, uh, but they never renumbered it. So everybody just, it's just, that's 27 or what, or 28, what's left of it. <laughs> but <clears throat> some of you that are experts on the Moffitt would be able to remember the date exactly, but it predates all my 1950s, uh, uh, stuff from the Rio Grande. So it was, you know, before probably World War II. But anyway, this is again the, Pro, the Provo train uh, running through. This is uh, a very, very steep, uh, <clears throat> really steep, like I, I have to crawl on my hands and knees out. <laughs> uh, this is along uh, <clears throat> East Portal Road, and that's South Boulder Creek, literally in it. Uh, and that's number five, running along the uh, one of the fills uh, along the river. And I wanted to try to get that that aspen glow coming back on the water. It's just very vibrant. And you try to capture that scene where you can hear the water rushing and 
you know, it's not so much about the train as it is the whole environment. I shot this on a 14 to 24 millimeter zoom that I, one of my favorite lenses. Uh, it's a Nikkor lens. Uh, I bought it about 10 years ago and it's one of my go-to lenses. I really like, it's, it's pretty good lens. It does a nice job and uh, <clears throat> it's really designed for architecture. So it keeps things straight, uh, which is kind of neat. Uh, a lot of the fish eyes you use that are 14 millimeter or 12, they, they, you'll get this kind of, as some of you guys know, it looks like it's kind of uh, fairly heavily um, uh, distorted. And this one's not too bad. It keeps things relatively straight, but that's pretty tight. Those aspen leaves are on the rock on the right are like two inches from the, the, the edge of the, the, the uh, lens. And I do know how to use aperture settings and then I use a tripod and you know it's 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 a lot of luck too it's also open the shutter and you hope you get the tram in the right spot <laughs> as you can see up there it's getting pretty close I would have probably lost it <laughs> but uh, once again one of my favorite spots with the UAV uh, I love this angle I wish there was a you know there's actually a bank of trees right behind this you could technically if you were a climber you or a tree climber you could climb up a tree there and get this shot there's trees right behind the drone <clears throat> it's not, I don't like to use the drone like aerial. I don't fly up 200 feet. This is about maybe 75 feet from the, the river level. So it's not really, you know, but it, I wanted to get the whole scene together to kind of, you know, share it with the world, what it looks like. And here is the exact opposite, me laying on the ground. Uh, this is located uh, uh, down near, uh, I believe, I have to remember. I believe this is, I'm trying to think of the milepost number. This is probably milepost 48. It's, uh, I walked the track, it's about a mile walk. And I'm laying on the ground, <laughs> literally. And the, the, the thing is with the time, of course Amtrak is so timely. Uh, I tried to get the sun to do that starburst through the aspen trees type of look that you see a lot of people do of aspen photography. And that sun kept going up and up. And I'll tell you what, if that train didn't turn up anytime sooner, it would have been, it would have blown it. <laughs> so it was pretty close. Uh, this is uh, done on the UAV. This is about 40 feet off the ground. Uh, and it's all private property, both sides, but boy, it's quite an angle. I mean, it's, it's, and you can, Years ago, the guys used to sit, there's a road on the left, it's a private drive. Uh, if I drove up in there, uh, let's put it this way, I've never never encountered the police, but I don't want to. The sheriff lives about a mile from here, so I don't want to mess with that. So I use the drone to basically trespass, <laughs> fly over the fences. But I still want to get this scene with all the different trees and everything. Uh, this is down in Chama. <clears throat> Again, I guess uh, this was another sunrise shot uh, trying to capture this is you know early fall, very late September. Uh, these pink flowers are really vibrant and uh, once again it's mostly a kind of a you know it's more or less artistic but 487 they in this particular scene here I believe he's uh, blowing out the uh, ash pan with a uh, compressed air and uh, they're getting ready for the day's work. It's kind of a neat thing to watch these guys work. I know some of you have seen it many times, but it's it's pretty cool to be able to witness this in this day and age. You know, the steam operations they run these things pretty hard down there. You know, they're 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 fired all the time. It's pretty amazing. Uh, this is also Coombers and Toltec. This is in Colorado. This is Coxo. Uh, this is a <clears throat> yes, it's trespassing. I'll admit that. I wanted to get this shot. I drove by it the day before and I saw this yellow everywhere and I thought I gotta get in there, you know? So I did it. Uh, I didn't encounter any troubles, but I did get the shot and I wanted to get them coming up on that fill, which is you know, most of you know on the right is the highway. Uh, this is up and around the trees and up in a little nook. And um, <clears throat> it's kind of a neat way to look at it. Um, this is down at the Jukes tree. This is low and wide. This is like a 16 millimeter. Uh, a lot of color, a lot of color down there. It's one of the prettiest places in the fall. So vibrant. Uh, that's Windy Point. Uh, trains working through that. The Aspens aren't completely changed, but they're pretty close. Uh, there's kind of a funny thing. They're one shared organism. So they, 
they kind of go like in a phase. Uh, you can kind of see it in this picture where they, they're, they're still green, they kind of turn lime green and it's this whole one shared organism. And it's like a wave. I saw a time lapse once that somebody had done someplace. And it was very interesting to see how it, how they did that. And uh, you kind of try to time it so that it's like right in the middle. But anyway, I'll move along. Uh, this is the jukes tree again, I think is another day. Uh, this thing's really alive with color. I mean, this thing's almost knock your socks off. <clears throat> I thought, gee, you want to take that tree out of there? That's the jukes tree. The story behind the jukes tree is I guess the guy left his hat up there. He was a photographer. Uh, some of you may know him more than I. I don't really know it that well, that story, but everybody talks about it being the jukes tree. And recently they cleaned this area out. It used to be pretty overly grown. But sometime in the last 10 years, one of these, like 2011 or so, they went in and really cleaned it out. And you can really get in there now and take pictures. It's, it's really nice. So I was really impressed that, that I could get the bridge over the Rio Chama River. And it was just kind of a neat thing. And the engineer was hanging out the side. It was all business. It was just a really fun shot. It was a, a neat, neat picture. Um, and this is kind of a total opposite play on that. The engine's totally in shadow but you get that kind of backlit kind of and all that, you know, vibrant color. So I thought that was kind of a neat layout to do. Uh, here's some of the guys I meet up with trackside occasionally. That's Mike Daneman in the middle, and that's Joe McMillan on the left. Some of you guys might know him. Uh, these are two pretty cool guys. I first met Mike Daneman when I was a little kid by, uh, it was McGregor, Iowa. Uh, and I was like maybe 11 years old and he was there with his brother, Tom, and my dad was there and, and he was, it was a pretty amazing experience. And every once in a while I bump into him up there. Uh, he lives about a mile from me and I've gotten to know both of these guys and they're pretty cool. You know, like a lot of you out there, they're, this is a great hobby, a lot of friendship, and, you know, camaraderie. There's a picture of me walking around with my cameras, looking like a dork. <laughs> Anyway, uh, moving along, at, <clears throat> somebody said this is a duck blind. I was, I dropped off the foster child at uh, the visit with her mother and went up here to Rocky, which my, a lot of our visits are done in Golden uh, for Jefferson County. And this is only about 10 minutes from there. And I'm like, hey, there's an eastbound coming. So I dashed up and my wife is a gardener. I pulled out of her, her shears out of the back of the car for her trimming shears for her uh, gardening. And I went in there and I cut out this little duck blind. And uh, it's just kind of an interesting way of looking through it. It's been, uh, it's been a popular place now. It's kind of neat. It's, uh, this is Rocky. Uh, this is kind of a popular shot, kind of done a thousand ways. <clears throat> uh, this is uh, located at uh, Tolan. It's kind of somewhat backlit. Uh, which is kind of part of it, but boy, those trees sure glow in that afternoon sun. This is uh, taken in mid-September. Uh, finally got this one. This is uh, located on the overpass there, just before East Portal. Uh, for whatever reason, every so many years, these guys turn red and orange up in the foreground. Uh, I don't know what it is that trips them to do that, but it's not every year. And this year they were doing it. I couldn't believe it, so I, I went up about four times over a week and a half period, waiting for them to kind of come together. Unfortunately, I didn't get a freight. All I got was Amtrak with it, but there's just not been much. It's been pretty quiet, um, fortunately, for the time of day. And as the day wears on, when that sun ends up due south of there, it's a pretty ugly shot because it's all backlit. Uh, that's a repeat of another angle with different light, um, a little more vibrant. You can kind of see how the uh, that's St. Mary's Lake out there, uh, which that's all private property. The rancher owns all that land out there, uh, and he's pretty pretty grouchy. I've uh, visited with him a few times, and his usual response is, stay off my land. So, you know, I try to avoid, you know, working anything in there. Uh, this is uh, located near Pine Cliff. This is from the uh, uh, a clearing in the overpass. Uh, I should say overpass. It seems like it. It's uh, the road, uh, uh, Coal Creek Canyon Road or 72 uh, curves up real high right there and there's a couple areas you can get out and 
years ago, it's all grown in now. Things have, even since I've been doing this for 18 years, it's, it's really grown in. I mean, these spots are going away. But there's a couple places where you can sneak out and look through the trees. Uh, and this is about weather, fall. Uh, this was taken in, in, you know, early fall. Or, well, actually, I think this was probably fourth week, maybe, of October. Uh, and that's just some of the early storms that come in. And, you know, it can get really dramatic, the light. <clears throat> and this is Palmer Lake on the joint line. And uh, this is recently, this was uh, lots of heavy fog, heavy mist. Uh, these are weather conditions that can happen. Uh, fog and mist is rare here. You know, I, I envy you guys back east. You get this moisture laden atmospheres and I, that's unusual here. We don't get much of that. And when it does happen, it's really intense. Uh, but it's very short lived. Oftentimes by the middle of the day, it's done. Uh, it's very dry here. It's a high desert. So you don't get a lot of the fog, that sort of thing. It's not common. Uh, this is uh, October, the heavy rains. Uh, this is up Coombers Pass. Um, this was one of the, I'm not, I don't know how to explain it. My, my friend Tim Tonge, he thinks that he's a weather scientist. Because I told him I'd never been so cold in my life. And I've walked in snow up to my waist. And I wasn't as cold as I was when I got, because the rain was coming up my backside, up my back. And he thinks the rains were super cooled which is a phenomenon that does happen in these high altitudes. And I think you could be right, because there, there was a, like all the railheads were all iced over. It was nasty, but I got an interesting picture out of the deal. Uh, that steam would just hang there. I mean, it was just, it was, you know, really, you know, that when the weather's like that, boy, that steam doesn't do anything. It just kind of just gets up there and stays put. <clears throat> this is early October uh, at Crescent and the frost, and the or hoar frost or whatever you want to call it on everything it's not really snow it's just frost that fog was sticking to everything because the temperatures were just just right and that was one of those trains that they ran for the fall uh specials that was i think uh 2018 i think it was a couple of years ago uh and yes it does snow <clears throat> in october and we had a lot of snow just last month almost a foot but uh often this is near broomfield uh, which is down on the front range and this is the uh, Laurel Montana to Denver manifest which is used to be a daily train but now it's like two or three days a week or at least it, it used to be pretty dependable kind of like the Seattle Z train but nothing's been dependable since COVID-19 came out it's been a whole different ball game um, everything I used to get used to was you know, for schedules I used to always count on seeing that uh, Seattle train around 4 p.m. in Broomfield and I don't remember the last time. It's been a year ago since I've been able to get that kind of luck. Uh, this is the beer train, <clears throat> the, the, the golden switch. And it's at the end of 44th Avenue. Uh, and that's uh, the Coors Brewery in the background. <clears throat> and this, uh, they had some snow in the higher elevations. And it was still full fall. It was, this was, uh, <clears throat> You know, probably early October. I mean, I can look at the exact dates, but it was early October. This was 17, I think. <clears throat> Trying to play on some of the different uh, conditions, the clouds. Uh, there's these popcorn clouds. When these storm systems clear out, you get these clouds that are, they're literally, they'll come and go. These shadows will, you know, I mean, this shadow is literally going right over me, right over the train in about five minutes. And they were just sitting there, so it was plenty of time to work out a sucker hole there, which was kind of cool. And the crewman, it was a surprise. He was out, he happened to walk into view, which was kind of neat. Oh, now it happened to me again. I had a message come up, Mike. And like something came up that said, let him in. And now I'm frozen again. I wonder what happened. <laughs> yeah, kind of weird. Now I'm frozen again. Are I wonder if it's... Are you almost done? Uh, I'm not sure, but I can be. <laughs> yeah, weird. Now, see, now I can't do it again. What about your caps lock? Was that uh, the issue the last time? Yeah, it seemed like it. Uh, beeps when I... Oh, how frustrating. Uh -huh. 
because I had I just had somebody me, enter. Uh, you know what I'll do here is I'll uh, I'll unshare your screen, and then uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I wonder if it was related to that. Because that's what happened last time. I had a little message come up that said, let yeah. them in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, you'll, you'll get that because. Uh, right. And then when that happened, my, my app, my, my thing, it froze. Like I can't do anything now. Oops. Sorry. I muted you by mistake. Uh oh, now I've muted him. Uh, there you, well, you unmuted yourself. So that's good. Well, I didn't know how I did. <laughs> God, swell. Oh, well. Well, I wonder, this is really weird because now I can't, I wonder, yeah, see, I don't even know how I can, hang on a second here. Oh, I wonder if I can go back in again. Let's try this. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll rush through it. I'd say, how am I doing on time? You're over. Am I over? Okay. Well, all right then. Uh, maybe I can just zip through a few photos here. Um, let's see, there's uh, not much to look at. Well, anyway, I can just uh, stop at any old place here. Uh, if anybody has any questions, fire away. <clears throat> uh, anybody have any questions? Excellent color there, uh, Eric. You really know how to work the color and you work the light. Oh, that's good. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I want to keep everybody on time so we don't fall asleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so well, you're basically editing every every photo. Uh, well, yeah, pretty much. I shoot the post process, so I'm I'm always doing I'm taking measures to do certain things. I could leave them straight off the camera, but um, I don't. Uh, it's just I use a common. I don't I don't use I use Lightroom, uh, and I use another program that I do layering with occasionally. Uh, it's on, and I do it all on my iPad. I have an iPad Pro. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do everything, all my editing is done on an iPad, which is, you know, for some of you probably sounds pretty crazy, but uh, so maybe that tells you how far I edit. It's probably not that much. Uh, Photoshop has a lot of really neat, fancy tools, uh, filters and so on. And I don't really, I just use the sliders in Lightroom, you know, for the, uh, there's different, like, you know, like sometimes yep. like, I feel the nose is too dark. I try to bring okay. the nose up a little bit so it, you know it's more uniform. But I also try to shoot it in the right light as well. But but you know if it, I try to take away those edgy. But it depends on the picture if it's it's if it's a uh, complementary. Yeah, go ahead. Be an idea to show the pictures as in a raw state and the different uh, states which is is in when you are working at it. So yeah, you know, one like can this see one the whole here, process. I that's. I wonder how fast I can find it. <clears throat> I don't know if I have it on this computer though, because I don't do my editing on a computer, and this is on a, my MacBook. Mm, because all these photos look very fantastic, and so one has no idea how they turned out at the in the first place when you took them. <clears throat> oh well, they're you know like in this to try to explain like this particular shot here. Uh, this one's done on a UAV. It was done on a Mavic 2 Pro. That's a Hasselblad sensor. And Hasselblad color science is pretty, uh, pretty amazing. Uh, it's uh, far beyond most manufacturers' cameras' abilities. And it was nice that we got that sensor on that drone, and it's basically a hand down from their uh, medium format bodies, which are around a hundred grand. And uh, and I have basic controls on the drone, real basic. Uh, most of the time, I I'll dial down the exposure value. Uh, to prevent from blowing out, like for example, in this particular one that's on the screen right now, uh, the mountains back there, they will blow out on you because the sun up there is really strong. And if you try to preserve anything, and I try to keep the darks like on the left, so I have to I have to think about that when I do the exposure on the on the camera. Uh, and when I get back to Lightroom, I can control, I can adjust the sliders and and around so I don't. Like, I don't know how to explain it without showing you, but I could show you. Uh, I dial down, I think, let me see if I can look at it on the screen right here, what they call it. So one of my favorite slider tools is, um, I'm going to look at it on my iPhone. Give me a second for it to wake up. Um, yeah, figures. Um, we might have uh, to. Yeah, uh, it's called highlights, the, the highlight slider. 
I really like that one. <laughs> if I dial back the highlights uh, slider, it really, and the way I shoot on the camera, it really comes together nicely. In this particular shot here, there's a lot of blowing snow. I, I should not have been flying a drone when I did this because the wind speeds were easily in excess of 30 miles an hour. Uh, but I was, this is rare to have snow and yellow aspens and a train at the right time of day. This is, I may never see this again the rest of my life. And I go up there all the time. I live 14 miles from here. And this is, this is rare. I mean, really rare. <laughs> so I did not want to miss it. I figured if I lost the drone, I'll go get it in the weeds. <laughs> but if I lose it, I'll lose it. But uh, I did not want to miss this, this whole scene right here. But anyway, uh, does that help explain what I do with uh, Lightroom? Yeah, OK, but you know, the explanation is quite clear. But uh, the best is always uh, to have a picture of it and see it by yourself, uh, what's, what's being done and how it turns out and converts. Yeah, I wonder if, if Mike but has anyway, a bad idea. for the explanation anyway. <laughs> well, I, I wonder if, my, if I'm going to try to see if I can find it quickly. Actually, uh, I don't know, I, you I know what, what I'd like to do here is just uh, move on with our program. We do have one more presentation. Bill Christopher okay. waiting in the wings. Um, Maybe we'll do why, a why presentation you, on editing. I tell you what, uh, Eric, why don't you, uh, after the conclusion of Bill's presentation, uh, if you can get that together, we can we can we can come, we can circle back to you. Uh, yeah, we can do that. I, let's move along. And but thanks a lot for watching, and thanks for the opportunity to share. Wonderful. Thank you. Can you unshare your screen there? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. And a round of applause for uh, Mr. Eric Lindgren uh, visiting us from Colorado. Yay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a good night. I, I'm not sure if I'll be able to hang around much longer. My wife wants me to help put my son to bed, so I'll uh, try. All right. Well, come back after Bill's uh, presentation. Uh, or better yet, don't leave because it's, uh, it's a killer presentation. Um, oh, yeah. I'm going to hang around now for a while. Yeah, right now. But, okay, uh, good. Excellent. Well. Um, okay. All right. Good uh, night, guys. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you there very much, uh, Eric.